Hi guys, welcome to the channel of love. Okay, I thought we'd have a little Sunday check-in, catch up. First of all, I want to say thank you for all your lovely emails, comments, messages um, of support. People that have reached out, the lovely gestures. I do get some lovely gestures. Um, today I received one and I hope that she doesn't mind me saying. Um, I don't tend to get back to the messages via email or messenger. I'm just not really that that kind of girl, I like to really talk, <laughs> um, but I also like solitude, so when I'm kind of off of camera, I, I do kind of um, retreat a bit, and I don't interact too much via email or messages, I tend to be working with people maybe more on the phone or or face to face, so that's a kind of reason why my response um, isn't always there, and it's normally because I, I don't kind of check into the e email, I don't have notifications that come up to tell me that an email's come through. Um, so I just kind of keep it separate. This part is kind of kept separate, but not, okay? But I have, um, I received a lovely message today. And this lady sent me a message back in April. Let me read it to you. So back in April, um, this lady is called Alana. She said, hi, I wanted to say thank you for all of the guidance recently. It has been very helpful and healing for me. I watch your readings on YouTube. I appreciate all that you do. And I know it must be exhausting. I hope you feel better soon. Okay, I must have been feeling a bit drained back then. It still happens now. Actually, I'm extremely tired um, today. I haven't been sleeping very well. Anyway, I received this message today and it says, hello again, I wanted to share a light code with you that I made for you to say thank you for all of the guidance I have received from your channel since January. Many blessings and thank you. And this is um, the light code picture that Alana sent through to me. I plan on getting this printed out. I'm quite mesmerized by it. So um, by all means, if you can give me more meaning behind this, um, drop me an email. And I will get back. I do tend to get through the emails. At the moment, I'm still wrapping up with the readings. They are coming. I'm back on it. Okay, but thank you, Alana. Um, a beautiful, a beautiful gift. I can't actually accept gifts in the physical. So if anyone ever kind of asks, um, especially if it's a donation, I do t tend to say, you know, go and treat yourself with that. But let me know. So there's some of you still outstanding out there that have offered to... Um, give a kind of donation to me of money and I've told you to go and treat yourself with that but the deal was you were meant to let me know <laughs> how you done that so there's no getting out of that so anyone outstanding that um, I've told to go and treat themselves but I was wanting to know how um, I'm still waiting for some of you to get back to me so um, you by all means you can send me an email it's just you are very patient on this channel um, I love the vibe on this channel. It's a, a good little sacred space we have here. Let's get on with um, a reading. Okay. I've got the Tarot Grand Lux cards here. These are a new deck. We might as well use them. I was going to use the Rider Weight, but um, we're going to go with the flow. So let's use the Tarot Grand Lux. I think I'm going to do a Celtic cross. Okay, we're not looking. Let's get these cards pulled then. That's the block or any challenges. What's gone on? It's gone a bit sideways that. What's gone on? Something's gone a bit ski with <laughs> we've not even looked at the cards okay future energy looks a bit straighter what's going on behind the scenes i think this is about um straightening things up just by the way the cards are coming out and kind of turning themselves the behind the scenes here is kind of what's gone on in the past, the cards, kind of a, an angle 
I can't really show you like that. Um, coming into the future of energy, it's kind of gone up a little bit more. And uh, what's going on behind the scenes, it's kind of midway to that. So straightening up. I'm babbling on now. It's 12-12. One, two, one, two. One, two, one, two. It's when you're checking something, isn't it? One, two, one, two. I don't know. <laughs> Why am I saying this? What's going on behind the scenes? The hermit. Someone's straightening something up, look. Um, he's thinking. The hermit needs to come out of hermitage. There's a candle there within that lantern. So he's thinking about how to straighten things up. The hermit goes in for um, spiritual awakening, to understand the, the deeper truths. Within challenging situations, I'm not sure why else she would go into hermitage to um, want to seek the truth of the matter. Let's have a look at what we're going to be talking about. The Two of Cups. Now, this is a new deck. Oh, that's nice. Comes in with the hand fasting. <clears throat> um, that's something that Autumn does. Autumn, I've just watched the archetypes of the um, of the king. So you said that you were kind of watched. What one did the magician I shared? And you said you would come across it the day before. I'm not sure how I'm coming across this. They're just popping up on my phone. But I have just literally watched one, um, the archetype of the king. I'll share that on the Facebook page but this reminds me of the hand fasting which is um i want to say a beauty a beautiful marriage ceremony that's um i believe kind of spiritual in practice no religion attached to it this is a uh, two hands coming together here This has been each other's support network. That's a lovely card. What's the block? So that's the two of cups, spiritual union, divine masculine, divine feminine. What's the block? Well, we have the hermit here. I don't know if he's trying to not look at his flame within the lantern. I don't know, it's right in front of his eyes. But I feel as if he may be off on a journey, following the stream. But then I felt like they were roots. Going back to your roots. This is what he's considering, going back to his roots. I like his plait <laughs> in his hair. Okay. What's the block? Three of Cups. We're going to have to clarify these. Um, time for a celebration. Or there's still somebody else in the picture. Okay, let's just leave it there with that energy. Because I'm picking up a slight third party. What Sam needs straightening up? What's gone on in the past? The Two of Swords. Seeing through the illusion, the intuition. I said as if, um, I feel this is the Divine Masculine here. He's not wanting to see um, really the flame of the Divine Feminine. But I believe that this is the veil of illusion will be dropped. I believe he can't look at her in the eyes. That's a deep 
soul contract. That kind of something happens within the eyes. And he doesn't want to give her eye contact. I believe that then he sees the truth. Okay, current energy, the page of cups. This is the, the page of love, he's in love. That's why he can't um, maintain eye contact. Um, if he does this, then it's like all his secrets are exposed with the two of cups. The page of cups is very much in love and he can't hide it. It's like he gets lost. It feels like he's sinking and um, kind of drowning in this love. That's the current energy, the Page of Cups, the Divine Masculine here being very much in love. And it's like he can't hide it. So he will hide himself. Future energy. Seven of swords. Okay, it's time to move on. I don't know where he's going. I think he's checking to see if the coast is clear. He's definitely going somewhere. He's collected up his swords, but there's two two swords here that are staring, I don't know, swords stare out of the, the window here. And this masculine here has collected stuff. You can see that he's he's moving on, he's going somewhere. A little bit sneaky, but he's seeing whether or not the coast is clear. Is he going to be spotted? Some kind of tiptoe there. He's definitely hiding. I feel like that's a bit of a king-queen energy with the swords here. So this is going on into the future. This is just looking for an escape, the right time to escape when um, the swords of truth. This could be the masculine here wanting to still escape this, um, this truth. Can he hide from it? What's going on behind the scenes? The Six of Swords. Well, there is definitely movement here now. But I feel it could be the feminine who's moving on. It's like she's being protected. All them swords are coming up out of the, the sea. You can see that there's some large waves in the background, so I won't say things have been a bit choppy. The waters are still um, treacherous to some degree. Who's in dangerous waters? And I feel as if this feminine here she looks of quite a high status. Not sure about the, the gentleman kind of um wherever he's taking her. I feel like she's being taken to safety. Okay. How this person is viewing themselves as a lover. They're meant to be with somebody else. And I believe that's why um, they're trying to escape or maybe trying to hide the truth. Maybe that's all his thoughts here that he's collected up. 
and he's trying to hide the truth. If I said that was a king and a queen, and I said this could be a third party situation, so this masculine still could be in a semi-committed relationship. If there's a lover on the scene, then it's not a committed relationship that he has with the, um, if them two swords there are the kind of Mr. and Mrs. And he's trying to hide the truth, I would say, from um, the partner, but he is feeling in love. He has a lover. Which is kind of what come up to start with. The situation is this sacred marriage, the sacred connection of support. And I said, what's the block? And I said, it kind of come up with a third party situation. Another person is in the picture. How others are viewing the divine masculine, a fool. A fool. And so I, I don't think he's managing to be able to cover up this love. So I'm not sure how his behaviour is being reflected on the outside, but um, he's acting differently. Hopes or fears? The High Priestess. I felt like this was the High Priestess energy. And it's a two of swords being at a crossroads, not knowing which path to take. But I didn't really read it like that. About speaking the truth here, the mask of illusion and something to do with the eyes, eye contact. The High Priestess. Um, I do feel that this could be not a negative energy, but I believe the truth is... The truth will set you free. Just with the owl here. And the kind of, um, the underlying energy is the hermit, so going within. And I said, why are you going within? It has to be a, a kind of serious matter for you to be able to withdraw yourself um, and go within to, with a needing to find a deeper meaning, a deeper understanding, because this love is unshiftable. Either this is the other person that can see through the illusion, so maybe she can tell within the eyes whether this divine masculine is lying. But the High Priestess here, it's like she knows the truth. This feels very much as if let it be known. But this is a hope or fear that the truth is known. Let's have a look at the outcome. The Eight of Coins. I feel the masculine is really trying to find a way to get around this love. He could be putting his head down, focusing on work. Um, I feel also that he might be pointing out details. Going through the minute details. His pentacles are there, he's got some books, he's working by candlelight. And he's kind of studying here. The Eight of Coins. So when you keep yourself busy, it's a very interesting reading. We're going to have a bit of a play with some new cards I've got. And um, they're not actually tarot or oracle cards, they're postcards. But they caught my eye and they reminded me of my childhood days. And yesterday, was it yesterday? Um, a kind of message come through saying... What, that's interesting with that um, ending here on the Eight of Coins with the book. Because it, the message was, the answer that you're seeking, you will find within a book. And I had some cards delivered yesterday. And I'd ordered a hundred classic covers of the Ladybird books. The postcards. And I thought it might be fun to try and incorporate them into readings and see if I can kind of see by the title of the book... Um, if we can bring it into the reading. So I think we should do that. Have some fun with um, postcards from Ladybird. 100 classic covers. And we start off look with ABC. And I said that, didn't I? I was like, one, two, one, two. I 
felt like it wants to go with kind of one, two, three, four. <laughs> um, okay. On the back of these postcards, it says, I'm part of the Ladybird generation. Most definitely am. So let's use these font covers and see, um, let's just have some fun and see what they want to come up with. I'm going to start with this um, hand fasting, two of cups, spiritual connection um, that cannot be broken. And it does really feel as if the divine masculine here is, whether this is his last attempt at um, trying to deny and refuse and trying to sever the connection. Um, let's find out. Okay. The Lord's Prayer. <laughs> I love how there's a feminine masculine here, praying to God together. Okay, the Lord's Prayer. I want to say this is the Lord's connection. This is a, a very spiritual, sacred, divine connection. Um, that's meant to be fulfilled within this lifetime. It was destined. So the block is this three of cups. It's like a third energy here coming in. Leave these cups here are kind of clinking together. And then this one here is just a third energy. I need the way that the hands are kind of set out. It looks like they're going to come together to, to join here with these two cups and this back one. And then this one here just feels like a bit of a foreign hand. It's like following suit. Um... Because I felt like it was following suit, I, I feel that this is not somebody who's kind of a helping hand. They just kind of um, follow. I'm not sure. But we're going to take this card. Animals bur burbs. <laughs> not burbs. Burbs. Is there a film called? I don't know if there is. Burbs. I don't even know if that's a word. Animal birds and plants of the Bible. Um, I said about going back to your roots. This is really about getting back to nature. Definitely wanting the simple, the basic life here. So the block is connecting with divine animal, birds and plants of the Bible. Especially as we have the Lord's Prayer starting us off. It's like this um, connection is blessed by above. The block is kind of getting out of this situation and connecting with the animals, birds, plants and maybe Bible stories. What's gone on in the past? Two of Swords. I'm going to just get a card um, because I picked up most definitely on the eye contact, the Veil of Illusion. This hermit here not being able to give this feminine eye contact, whether this is the divine feminine or whether it's um, another partner within the divine masculine's life. It was in reverse and the card is the flicker dick, um, which it does can, kind of come across quite um, sexual to me. And with it being in reverse, this could be the divine masculine has kind of lost his sex drive. So I want to say this feminine most definitely can see through the veil of what's going on. And we have the flicker dick. So she may have been trying to um, instigate maybe some sexual contact. And it may have been denied. There's definitely something here about um, 
the current energy is the love, but I feel like the masculine is very much trying not to show this love. Page of Cups. We've got two. The soldier trying to be strong, soldiering on. It's about being a hard man. He doesn't look very much like um, this page of cups here. This man here looks like, yeah, he's busy at work, soldiering on. Easy reading. It's easy just to carry on. Put your head down. Act like the tough guy. And um, I'm not going to say, unless this is a time when you actually have to deal with the love, your emotions with inside comes to the surface so people at work the soldier fighting battles here looks like it's the easier path is to carry on um, rather than addressing this love or facing this love it's about facing this love the postman and the postal service He could be thinking about sending a message. People at work again. The postman and the postal service. Unless this is a, um, a job, an occupation. But this could be about wanting to maybe put it down in a letter. Because we have that soldier card, I feel that maybe in his moments of waiting, it could be about actually sending a letter, maybe, writing a letter of love, allowing kind of the feminine side to, to shine through. Just drop the soldier. Sorry. <laughs> With the postman and the postal service. So I really felt, even though this is the moving on card, I really felt there was a moving on energy here. It's like this masculine just wants to move on. Maybe he can just kind of hide um, the truth. Hide from the truth. Hide the truth from um, another partner. This is the future energy. The story of flight, the Ladybird Achievements book. I feel like he just wants to escape from it all. The Postman. The Divine Masculine could be thinking about actually like changing a uh, location to see whether or not he can escape from it that way. With the postman here, that could be changing kind of postcode. I felt like he was moving on somewhere. Wants to take flight. Going on behind the scenes, it, I feel this is... I'm not really sure whose energy this is. She does look quite important in this boat. It's not good water she's going through, and I feel like there's a card here that wants to come out. The Tinker's Wig. Oh, that's interesting. The story of flight. And then we have the Tinker's Wig, and it's a story for children. There's a masculine here. He reminds me of Rumpelstiltskin, spinning gold. So maybe the Divine Masculine here is... Um, this is the moving on card. Going from... Because this feminine looks very regal, in my eyes. And the masculine doesn't. And I want to say this is kind of a rags to riches story. The Tinker's Wig. Or he's spinning himself like some hair. <laughs> Just with the, the wig here. But he is actually telling... Ooh, they all just went... They're my new cards. Okay. 
The Tinker's Wig, a story for children. This is about being able to pass on the knowledge. Or it could be the masculine remember what maybe elders have said to him. So it's about spinning your gold, your treasure. Just because he's at the back here and he doesn't look, his attire doesn't really match these two feminines here. So I feel maybe he feels less worthy. But I think that's going to be turned around. This is a story that he's going to be able to share and tell. The soldier's story. How he's viewing himself is the lover. I'm going to have to just work with the cards that are left in here. The stars and their legends. So it was written in the stars. It's like it's all aligned. Tricks and magic. So I feel like this just came out of nowhere. Just about to set light to something. The matches I think are going to um, set fire to that piece of paper. There's the intentions there. Learn about tricks and magic. I want to say it's about learning about the arts. Spirituality. The stars. Gone within. Is it time to ignite that flame? The current energy here for the, the lovers is it's written in the stars. I want to say and that they will be legends to tell. But they will actually be legends. <clears throat> Tricks and magic. The lovers. The connection. How others are viewing the divine masculine, the fall. Maybe he takes a leap of faith and ignites this. Um, magnets, bulbs and batteries. It's all to do with physics, science, experiments. So... Maybe some will think that he's a fool. Magnets, bulbs and batteries. So he could be maybe really playing with some um, spiritual tools. So the Ladybird Junior science book. So this is when you grow up and you want to explore new beginnings. Um, the fool is the is the first card in the, the tarot. He takes it's not even that leap of faith. He's off on a new, brand new start. First person he comes across is the magician, who shows him how to use his powers, and then everything kind of gets a bit <laughs> uh, messy. It's just like the Bible. <laughs> All started off okay. So we have the fool here. It's like he's leaving town. Magnets, bulbs and batteries. Light bulb goes on. Magnets, a magnetic draw towards the connection and I want to say the batteries to keep fighting on. Hopes or fears. The High Priestess. This is knowing that the truth will set you free, but let's find out because there's a but. Lives of the Great Composers, Book One. This is very classical. Why do I want to say that? Why is she saying that this is classic? 
Um, like she, I don't know, maybe she can't believe whether this masculine um, enjoys orchestras or um, just music. The great, the great composers, classical music very much here. The lives of the great composers with the high priestess. Then we end on the outcome. The eight of coins. Putting your head down. What is he doing here? Tricks and magic is um, shouting out. I don't know who this is. Aesop's Fables, a second book. Looks something to do, I'm not sure I'm gonna try and find out what that word Aesop's means. I need to see how I pronounce this word. It just says Aesop's Fables or the Aesopica is a collection of fables credited to Aesop, a slave and storyteller believed to have lived in ancient Greece. So this is storytelling going again here. Oh, the characters. It's interesting. Big Bad Wolf, the Hare, the Tortoise, the Honest Woodcutter, the North Wind and the Sun. Aesop was a Greek fabulist and storyteller credited with a number of fables now collectively known as Aesop's Fables. He was a slave and a storyteller. The Fox on the, and the Ox, Belling the Cat, The Town Mouse and the Country Mouse, I remember that one. Um, the Fox and the Grapes, The Wolf and the Crane, The Lion and the Mouse, The Gnat and the Bull, The Plane Tree, The Plane, spelt as in P-L-A-N-E, The Plane Tree. He spoke about being um, a legend. <coughs> Which kind of brings it into the kind of storytelling here. I feel here as if maybe um, the Divine Masculine is writing down, journaling the story. There's a very mixed energy here of actually wanting to refuse it but kind of going in and do and not in solitude. There's a lot of writing, maybe journaling, stories that will be told. The second book, it could be the, well it says a composer, maybe through music, stories that are told through music, through song. Okay. But it's definitely something about the postman. Letters, writing, delivery, the postal service. How, that's kind of like how do you deliver the message to where you want it to get to. And there's various forms, isn't there? It's like part of this is definitely a kind of a third party energy trying to hide the connection from there. There's this energy of maybe looking for an escape route, um, learning the arts, but then there's not being able to face it. Okay, what did I say? Everything was a bit ski with. Needs to be straightened up a bit. It's out of sync. What else are we gonna use? Let me show you what other cards I have. Should we see what the bottom is here? Horses. I 
just felt like it was time to get on your horses. It's like the night. The knights of the tarot. Horses. I don't know much about horses. Is there a phrase that's get your horses on? It sounds right, but um, get your horses on. I don't know if it is. Oh, hold your horses. Get your horses on. <laughs> hold your horses. I feel saying get your horses on. Because high horse, being on your high horse. So hold your horses literally means to keep your horse still, not to be confused with holding them in a stable. Someone is to slow down when going too fast or to wait a moment or to be more careful or to be patient before acting. It is usually followed up with an explanation to demonstrate why you should wait. Hold your horses. We're going to put in high horse as well. Because there is a higher horse, isn't there? Yeah. So we'll finish off with that definition, high horse. Ooh, there's a song that's come up. What is the meaning of high horse? If your sister tells you to get off your high horse, she means that you're acting snobby or self-righteous and she wants you to cut it out. The phrase... The fr I need to get my words out. The phrase, high horse, grew to mean... Oh, where have you gone? It kind of um, takes me to away from what we was reading. You'll know someone is on his high horse because he will behave as though he's superior to everyone around him, almost like a haughty king. I said about, I read the archetype of the king. We're going to share that on the Facebook page. Um, like a haughty king riding his horse past his lowly subjects. In fact, this is most likely where the saying comes from medieval landowners and soldiers were known to ride large horses to emphasise their power and superiority over their subjects. The phrase high horse grew to mean pompous or self-righteous from there. Wow, soldier. Pompous, self-righteous. And maybe he seems to have got himself. Up on a high horse. <laughs> he needs to get down. Okay. It comes in well. Thank you for clarifying that <coughs> so with the hermit here he's gone within he's gone back to his roots interesting it said about a sister um, and kind of going back to your roots so maybe analysing things that you know has been said to you you need to go within to um, seek the truth within those situations what was true like I said, if it causes you to go within, then it's something that um, you need to have a look at. <laughs> Get to the truth of the matter. Right, let's move on to, I've got some, have I used these ones? Sacred Destiny, I'm trying to think what other new ones i got. Have the Ladybird postcards. We've, oh, we've got some Heal Yourself reading cards. Let's pull one of these. Beauty. 
Wow, I was quite mesmerised by her and I was looking at the compass and it's the card that I've pulled up. There is a snake that's coming in, but we've got beauty. Seventeen. Recognise your inner and outer beauty. You are beautiful, special, unique and attractive. When was the last time you looked in the mirror and felt good about what you see? Did you know that your features can literally change based on how you feel about yourself and your life? Your internal experiences are etched on your face and your body. People can feel your energy when you enter a room. When a person who is not thought of as being physically good looking connects to their own inner light, wisdom and warmth, the glow that emanates from within make them extremely appealing and attracts people and opportunities towards them. Focus on what you love about yourself and allow yourself to shine. If you are challenged by how you see yourself, this could be a perfect time for an internal and an external makeover. So action. Look at your face in the mirror. Acknowledge what is beautiful about you. It can be physical or spiritual. Ask yourself how you nurture your inner beauty. Do you allow others to see your light, your care inside, kindness and warmth? Ask your body what it needs to feel healthy and taken care of. This could involve changing your diet, having a new exercise program, updating your wardrobe, or getting a new haircut, etc. Give to yourself. I spoke about kind of from rags to riches. So I think we should just, it's a story that's going to, of transformation that's going to be told. I don't really want to add too much more to that message. I think it kind of speaks for itself. I'm going to get another one. Healing. 21. Illness and pain in your body is a message for you to slow down, look within and make important changes. If you are experiencing stress, feel overwhelmed, are suffering ailments in your body or feel exhausted and depressed it means that your body is trying to communicate with you your body wants you to start treating it in a more loving manner and listening to the messages it is sending you you need to become conscious of the areas in your life that you are avoiding or suppressing healing takes time it is a process your first step towards healing is to create a safe loving supportive environments where you can listen to your inner wisdom. I love how it said the first steps and the postcard started off with like ABC. One, two, one, two. Action. Take a few deep breaths and relax your body. Place your hands on an area in your body where you have pain. Ask your body, is there a message you want to give me? This message may come to you as thoughts, words, images, insights, feelings, memories, etc. Say, I call on my divine healing intelligence to help release all pain, blockages and density from this area. Watch and feel as dense energy leaves your body. Say, I call on my divine healing intelligence to infuse this area with a green ray of light. I ask that all the immune mechanisms of my body be activated and my body now return to a state of perfect balance and health. Imagine a green light moving through your body and repairing it. Gently bring your awareness back to normal and open your eyes. So healing and beauty.
looking after our divine feminine within and on the outside as well. Slow down. Sounds like there's a, I would say it's probably a kid <laughs> out there pulling their brakes. Um, it's been raining like treacherous rain. <laughs> it was quite dangerous. I was out. Um, I was actually out in the country and it was it's it's quite bad out there. Well it stopped now, but when you try and maybe you know use your brakes in the in the rain, you could kind of skid a bit. Um you've got to be really careful, take it slow. Take it slow, and I want to say take it slow really to connect within to your beauty, your inner beauty, learning to love yourself, and um this healing time. I did say that I felt tired. Um And I think it's important to rest when you're urged to rest if you can. What else did I get through? Oh, some messages. I quite like these. Messages from heaven. They're communication cards. Love and guidance guidance from the other side of life. Okay. Why I'm singing, I'm sending out an SOS. I'm sending out an SOS, a message in a bottle. We support you as you cleanse and clear both inside and out. And I do believe that our emotions are reflected within the weather. <laughs> There's healing that needs to take place, but there's also this purging and releasing. So let's have a look at 34. We support you as you cleanse and clear, both inside and out. Just because she has two rings on here, on her hands, I believe that this is what needs to be done before this um, sacred connection um, unites. The, object, the objects you surround yourself with can be heavy, energy-wise. Okay, I've got to really get this flowing now. The objects you surround yourself with can be heavy, energy-wise, and really weigh you down. Do you still own belongings that you inherited and you don't even like? Have you gathered too much stuff around you as a type of emotional protection? Surrounding yourself with things that you love or that you find useful on your journey, life journey will free you up to move forward. Your loved ones say, we give permission to let go of things that no longer serve your best interests. It's really about getting ready, isn't it? Being ready. Clearing through, especially as it's talking about memories, maybe memorabilia of the past that you don't need to hang on to anymore. You do kind of get to this point in the ascension process where... You don't need to hang on to them anymore. Um, it's like it really was a different you. Well, it was. It wasn't the same in the same body. Your body obviously evolves and changes as we age. But um, but you can leave that behind. It's like the attachment to it. Um, it's like you no longer need anymore. And you can just free up that space. And then you learn to kind of live so much more minim minimal Minimalistic, minimalistic, put the L in there. Minimalistic, is that right? You know what I'm talking about. Very simple, basic life. You don't really need the possessions. Go out and plant new life seeds, sow for your future. It's just kind of like make a wish. If you want the future to be different, then you have to act in a different way. Even if you want more of the same, you need to invest energy 
in what is to come. Whatever you give out will come back to you threefold. The person you work on today is the person you become tomorrow. Your loved ones remind you, study, learn, grow. Create your future with the work you put in today. We are here to help you. Ooh, kind of sending in the card. Wow. How am I doing for time? Oh, 55.26. That's not bad. Let's have a look at a Sacred Destiny card. Just want to get used to these new decks that I've got. Community. This beautiful rainbow here, shining in through the trees. Oh, it looks like you found that the, um, you got to the other side of the rainbow. But it's all beautiful. <laughs> Transformation. Let's have a look at community. It's the ancient forest. The towering, the towering ancient trees in a forest look distinct from one another. Yet beneath the surface of the earth, their roots are intertwined. Picked up about that, going back to um, your roots. The roots act like a kind of communication system throughout the community of trees. Instantaneous messages travel through the underground system. Nutrients can travel on this network. The postal service, how things get through, and we've been talking about, you know, kind of tree hugging and connecting with nature. So it's coming in lovely here. Trees at one side of the forest can supply the nourishment required on the other side of the forest. Danger at one end of the network is communicated to the far end of the intertwined roots. I feel that with this connection here that can't really be severed or broken, um, it is being picked up. So the trees at one side of the forest can supply the nourishment required on the other side of the forest. And I feel that's the feminine energy um, trying to help nourish the, the divine masculine's energy. And then we have danger at one end of the network is communicated to the far end of the intertwined roots. So I feel as if the Divine fe Feminine can pick up um, the fear of the Divine Masculine. So the sacred landscape wants you to know. Support is all around you, even if you are not consciously aware of it. Allow yourself to be supported. Give encouragement to others. The more you allow yourself to be supported, the more your dreams can come true. If you believe that you have to do it all alone, you will. Your true family is not just blood relationships. Sometimes the strongest family ties are friends who know who you are. Sometimes they are your ancestors and soul family who reside in spirit. This card speaks of finding your community and your people. It is a card of remembering that your people are at your side, believing in you, loving you, and standing strong beside you. Call on your community and ask for their assistance. They are only a thought away. Oh, it just reminds me of kind of the beginning, my appreciation to um, our community here, our soul tribe here on the channel. Okay, um, hmm. I'm going to get wrapped up. But I've had to move all my cards out of the drawers um, as we have we have quite a lot now. I'm not going to say we have far too many. That's not the case. An affirmator. Let's go for an affirmator. Um, we just needed more space. Get centred. When it gets to be too much, whatever it is, I close my eyes and return to my centre. In my centre, I have the wisdom and tranquility of a... And you add in your favourite animal. Hold in A, then you add in a magical item. Floating through space on a piece of furniture. Okay, let me hold this up. 
When it gets to be too much, just so you can see the writing there, when it gets to be too much, whatever it is, I close my eyes and return to my centre. In my centre, I have the wisdom and tranquility of a favourite animal, holding a magical item, floating through space on a piece of furniture. Getting centred, grounded. Okay, I'll take them too. I think I'm going to end on a roomy message. Story of my life. This is hilarious. It speaks about the story that you're going to write. Um, and it spoke about if you feel, where was it, that you, the community, if you feel that, you, I don't know if it said if you'll succeed, then it's basically, if you don't think you're going to be able to achieve something, then you're not, you won't be able to. So as I tell myself the story of what's happening in my life, I choose to make it the kind of story where even the tough parts have a, have a sort of inner beauty. It's ultimately a happy story where every character, no matter how wicked, is doing their best. And let me tell you, it'll be worth it when I earn the Pulitzer Prize for Best Inner Monologue. Story of my life. There's one more. It's just about whether or not it's going to be a sad story, like have a sad ending or a happy ending. It depends on the story that you're wanting to tell later on. Authenticity. We've got a megaphone here again. Typing up a story. Authenticity is the name of the game. That's the name of the game. <laughs> okay. Whatever comes up, I will feel it. A bit of ABBA. Whatever needs to be said, I will say it. Whoever doesn't get it doesn't doesn't have to get it, but at least they know it because I've said it, and that's way better than leaving a passive aggressive note about it. This might be more about um, working on communicating, because I feel like there's a lot of writing going on here. And this could be about learning the skill of obviously um, clearing through that throat, throat chakra. And being able to speak your to uh, your tooth, your truth, wisdom tooth. <laughs> Lots of people having trouble with their wisdom teeth. I feel it. I don't have my wisdom teeth. I had them out late teens, um, but I went through this stage every evening. Every evening, I started to on my left side here at the bottom, extreme wisdom tooth pain, and I started to then speak to people, and they were like, "I've got terrible toothache." And I've kind of put it together with it's it's your wisdom teeth um, coming up. Actually, um, a lady that I I, I work with, she um, and she texts me um, the other day to say that her wisdom teeth had gone down, but she wasn't feeling much wiser, and she wanted to kind of have a, a catch up soon. So uh, maybe chuckle a bit, but maybe she shouldn't have that attitude that she doesn't feel much wiser because that's going to become your truth. So let me reread this part. Authenticity is the name of the game. Whatever comes up, I will feel it. Whatever needs to be said, I will say it. Whoever doesn't get it, doesn't have to get it. But at least they know it, because I've said it. And that's way better than leaving a passive-aggressive note about it. Okay. Let's end on this roomy message. Oh, it's taken me to the journey of love, though. Okay, we'll do the journey of love. And then we'll do a roomy. Else is my roomy pack. What's the name of the game? Does it mean anything to you? Journey of love first. It's 11 minutes past one. Okay, that means I've been on for about an hour then. Hour and five minutes. We said 12, 12. Well, I said 12, 12. Okay, let's get a journey of love. Fire and ice. Ooh, the blending. 37. 
You are learning to hold the tension of opposites, of those things that don't immediately seem to go together. Within your being, okay, stop pausing. <laughs> you are learning to hold, the I, I shouldn't say that, it's not that I need to stop pausing, I need to allow this message to flow. You are learning to hold the tension of opposites, of those things that don't immediately seem to go together, within your being, without collapsing into confusion, judgment or denial. There is passion and serenity, creation and destruction, new life and death emerging within you, within your relationships. Sometimes this is hard to handle. We want to make things simpler, to just let go of the conflict and complexity and choose one or the other. You are, a, you are a grand enough soul to be able to withstand the rigours of depth, to go deep, to live fully, to let the divine have its way through, your, through you requires a willingness to stand at the centre of the pairs of opposites and eventually know that they are connected to each other, that they exist only in relationship to each other, to breathe and simply be. If you are consciously feeling the conflict in your life, internally or externally, then you are being initiated through fire and ice. Stay present, be patient and wait. There is nothing to fix here, just awareness to step into as divine creation continues to unfold through you. As you master this initiation, you will find a sweet nectar of bliss dripping within. This oracle brings you guidance that the conflict you feel within or externally is a sign of your spiritual growth. Soon you will grow larger than the conflict, but for now you do not need to engage in it. Simply to be present to it and allow it to work its way through you until you are strong enough to have outgrown the conflict, giving rise to a clear direction. It may seem impossible, beloved, but it is not. You are a vast being. Give yourself a chance to realise this and have patience. All is becoming, including you, according to the perfection of divine design. This oracle brings specific guidance on any relationship matter requiring a decision. Until you have simple clarity in your heart beyond the pushing away and pulling closer, then it is time to wait for there is more yet to be revealed. Only when your heart speaks clearly, then will, then you will do well to act as feels truthful for you. Let me just reread that part. This oracle brings specific guidance on any relationship matter regarding a decision until you have simple clarity in your heart beyond the pushing away and pulling closer, then it is time to wait for there is more yet to be revealed. Only when your heart speaks clearly, then you will do well to act as feels truthful for you. Let's read this poem. There is a beautiful silence now. I'm gonna to have to hold up this, um, these two. There is a beautiful silence now, as I hold your hands and listen to your eyes, across a span of moments called time. There are no words that say as much, nor walls that could confine the wings of our feelings or the rhythm of our eyes. That's beautiful. I'm leaving it there. I'm not doing a boomy. I'm going to leave it there. Right, guys, this was a, um, a Sunday check-in. I should be on over the next couple of days. Um, I do have plans. I have a visitor come in. So if I'm not on, that's why I am preoccupied elsewhere. But I will catch up with you soon, guys. Those private readings, personal readings are coming out. It's all in divine timing, it seems. I believe everyone that's had a reading kind of will say that it came at the, the right time for them. Um, they are kind of getting out to you. I still have a few more to do, but I'm just going with the flow with it. Patience. It's just maybe not the right time for your reading. But when it does get to you, 
um, be perfect timing. Okay, right guys, I will catch up with you all soon. So have a fantastic day. Take care. Much love. Bye for now.